Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation. Today we'll discuss how to design reinforced UHTC beams with high deformation capacity. So this presentation is from the work with from me and my PhD advisor, Professor Sarah Billington. So first, let's briefly review UHPC material behavior under tension. Compared to conventional concrete, UHPC shows much higher tensile strength and strength capacity. After tensile cracking, UHPC so shows this tensile strength hardening behavior until cracks localize in the weakest plane, a phenomenon known as crack localization. So despite the higher material ductility of UHPC material, reinforced UHPC beams often show early failure and lower structural ductility than reinforced concrete. This early failure and lower structural ductility is dangerous, so this presentation will focus on understanding the causes of this early failure and presenting a design method for achieving high structural ductility in reinforced UHPC beams. Today, we'll discuss experimental results from these five selected beams. Each column represents one reinforcing ratio. We have a median reinforcing ratio of 1% and a high reinforcing ratio of around 2%. Each row represents one fiber volume. We have a typical high fiber volume of 2% and also exploring two lower fiber volume options. The right figure here shows the low deflection responses from unreinforced UHPC beam test results with these three different fiber volumes. So these are material characterization test results from unreinforced UHPC beams. As we can see, when the fiber volume reduces, the flexural capacity of the unreinforced beam also reduced. Here is a reinforced beam design and test up. These two meter long beams are simply supported and subjected to four point bending. Steel strength is measured using strong gauges installed at mid span, and mid span deflection is measured using string potentiometers. And the surface strength in this gray region in the constant moment region is monitored using a digital image correlation system. First, let's ex examine the impact of increasing reinforcing ratio for reinforced UHPC beams with 2% fiber volume. The left figure here shows a low drift response. The drift here is defined as the ratio between mid span deflection and shear span length. So these two beams with different reinforcing ratios behave similarly prior to crack localization, which is denoted as a circle here. After crack localization, this beam with a low reinforcing ratio lost its load capacity because its steel strength hardening capacity cannot compensate for the fiber bridging loss after crack localization. And because the flexural load or the flexural stress dropped after cracks localized in the weakest plan, only one single localized crack can form, and the further deformation was accompanied by the widening of this single localized crack. Also know that. UHPC has a very high bond with steel reinforcement, and this high bond will cause steel plasticity concentration near the single localized crack and contribute to the early fracture here. On the other hand, for this beam with a high reinforcing ratio, they can increase load capacity after crack localization because now the steel strength hardening capacity compensates for the fiber bridging loss. And because the flexural stress increased after the cracks localized in the weakest plan, additional localized crack can form and help spread the steel plasticity to more location and help delay the steel fracture here. And eventually, the beam fell after crushing, and the load drop after crushing is very gradual because of the high spotting resistance provided by the fiber reinforcement. And to further on understand the importance of, of utilizing the steel strong capacity. On the bottom here, I show the normalized tensile stress versus tensile strength relationship for a UHPC material with 2% fiber volume and the steel reinforcing bar. So to compare them more directly, I normalize the tensile stress by their maximum tensile strength. So we can see the, here, although UHPC material is more tactile and show tensile strength hardening behavior, its tensile strength capacity is still much smaller than the tensile strength capacity of reinforcing steel. So to achieve high deformation capacity, we need to form these multiple localized crack to spread the steel plasticity to more locations and therefore delay the steel fracture. 
So in summary, increasing the reinforcing ratio can change the failure mechanism from failure after crack localization to failure after gradual stress hardening and finally by gradual crashing of UHPC material and increase the failure drift by 180%. This finding is unique because for traditional reinforced concrete, increasing reinforcing ratio will decrease the def deformation capacity of reinforced concrete beam. Here I show the typical drift value for reinforced concrete with 1 and 2% reinforcing ratio. So it is very unique that our reinforced UHPC can allow a high reinforcing ratio while achieving this high deformation capacity. And this is because of the high crushing resistance and high compressive strength of the material. Let's further examine the differences between these two beams by looking at their behavior at the peak load. So these photos show the constant moment region behavior at the peak load of these two beams. For this beam that fell to crack localization at the peak load, the measured maximum compressive strength indicates that the UHPC material is still elastic in compression, so we have not utilized the high compressive strength of UHPC material. And the strength gauge, steel strength gauge readings indicate that the steel rebar is in the yielding plateau, and the maximum crack width measurement indicates that fiber bridging just does failing in the flexural tension zone. On the other hand, for this beam with a high reinforcing ratio, which fell after gradual strength hardening, at peak load, the maximum compressive strength indicates that UHPC material is softening in compression, but the spotting is very well restrained by the fiber reinforcement. And the softening indicates that we now have fully utilized the high compressive strength of UHPC material. And the steel strength gauge readings indicate that the steel rebar is significantly hardening at the peak load, and the wide opening cracks indicate that fiber bridging is almost lost in the flexural tension zone at the peak load for this beam that fell after gradual strong hardening. These results show the impact of reducing fiber volume for reinforced UHPC beams with a median reinforcing ratio of 1%. So this orange beam with 2% fiber volume, as we have seen previously, fell after crack localization. Up when the, as the fiber volume reduced to 0.5%, the uh, tensile capacity from the fiber bridging also reduced. And this, finally, with this, in this beam with a 0.5% fiber volume, the reinforcing steel hardening capacity compensates for the fiber bridging loss after crack localization. The beam finally fell after gradual strong hardening of steel and then by gradual crushing of UHPC material. With this characteristic change of uh, failure mechanism, we also see the change from formation of one single localized crack to multiple localized crack and the delay of steel fracture here. So in summary, reducing fiber volume can also change the failure mechanism and increase the failure drift by 160%. Now, it is clear that reinforced UHPC beams have two different flexural failure paths for the first failure path, reinforced UHPC beams fail after crack localization, and because the flexural load dropped after the cracks localized in the weakest plane, only one single localized crack can form, and the strong bond cause steoplastic concentration near the single localized crack and the early fracture. And for the other beams, they can get increased load capacity due to the gradual crash. Uh, gradual strong hardening of steel, and because the flexural load increased as the cracks localized in the weakest plant, multiple localized crack form and help spread steel plastic to more locations that delay steel fracture. And a very important concept to remember is that this significant steel strong hardening can happen in reinforced UHPC beams because of the high crushing resistance and high compressive strength of UHPC material. For conventional concrete, so early crushing usually prohibits the significant hardening of reinforcing steel. And we also discussed that by reducing fiber volume and increasing reinforcing ratio, we can change the failure mechanism and increase the uh, deformation capacity of reinforced UHPC beams. So in the experiments, I saw that the two failure passes are affected by the ratio between steel strong hardening capacity and UHPC tensile capacity. 
This ratio is defined as omega, omega here. It's a force by force ratio. Here is a detailed expression of the omega ratio, which is a function of steel properties, UHPC tensile strength, the beam geometry, and reinforcing ratio. So for the day, I don't want you to memorize these details because you can find them in our journal publication. But the key concept to remember is that these two failure paths are affected by the ratio between steel's post-yield strength hardening capacity and UHPC tensile capacity. So this figure here compares the drift capacity of experiments from literature and my PhD study to the omega ratio. The squares here represent failure after crack localization and X here represents failure after gradual strong hardening. There are two major observations here. First, omega shows a positive correlation with the drift capacity of reinforced UHPC beams. Second, Omega equals one serves as a transitional boundary between failure after crack localization and failure after gradual strong hardening. Do you understand why? That is because while omega is very small and less than one, we expect the beam to fail abruptly after crack localization. And while omega increase, we expect the beam, the load reduction to be more gradual and the failure to be delayed. And eventually when omega goes above one, we expect the steel rim, strong hard, steel strong hardening capacity to compensate for the fiber bridging loss, and the beam will fail after gradual strong hardening for multiple localized crack and delay the steel fracture here. To summarize, we discussed that there are two different failure paths for reinforced UHPC beams, which represent distinct failure mechanism and range of ductility. We also discussed an omega ratio that can help predict the ductility and the failure path of reinforcing of reinforced UHPC beams. Utilizing this omega ratio, we can design for failure after gradual strong hardening and the high deformation capacity in reinforced UHPC beams. With all this, I would like to thank you for your time and answer any questions. A big round of applause to you too, uh, Very nice presentation, excellent um, results you have shared here and then present it. Uh, what kind of question? Uh, Tony, do you have a question to share right now? Yes, a very quick question. Uh, if I summarize the result of Mr. Shao at the end, uh, I could uh, try to put it this way. If you use a UHPC that is strain softening, then you have that undesirable behavior. If you use a UHPC that is strain hardening, then you get, in effect, more ductility in the reinforced concrete beam. Can this be a simple or summary answer to your uh, conclusion? Uh, so I think uh, we are not targeting as a strain softening material because all of material shows tensile strain hardening behavior in our study. And we yes. still believe tensile strain hardening is beneficial, especially for the cracking control as a surface limit state. So we still believe we need to have a like tensile strain hardening or crack localization strength around the yielding point of reinforcing steel so we can well control the crack opening. But at the ultimate limit state, we would like the steel strong hard as well as the steel strong capacity to be dominating because yes. steel is much more effective and then like more predictable yes you are right the steel strain hardening behavior must be there anyway mm -hmm. but my point was the change in the behavior of the beam is effectively guaranteed by the fact that you put a uhpc that itself is strain hardened or clearly strain hardened uh yes so I, I, yes okay. if Let's i think about it yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can think about this. Uh, that's, an, that's an excellent question. This is a great topic. Uh, we have done some research a few years ago. Uh, is similar with the, the same concept on direct tensile tests with reinforced UHPC and with fibers. And, and this is true. Uh, whether you have strain softening, strain hardening, UHPC, depending on the amount of fibers you put in, um, the, more, the more strain hardening you have, the more tensile capacity you have from the UHPC, the more it might be critical uh, to get like a brittle behavior, right? Because then when the UHPC fails, then the steel might not compensate on this. So 
what uh, she said here is, is, is correct. So either you want to lower the amount of fibers to make it more ductile, or you want to increase the amount of steel to make it more ductile. So he said it correctly that um, there needs to be a good balance between the reinforcement capacity from the UHPC and from the steel. So it's great to see that we see results here in terms of the bending behavior. Yeah, uh, thanks. Excellent. Um, more questions, she for you uh, in the Q&A session. Um, any other direct questions maybe from the panelists? Yes, Professor Shaw. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think one thing, if I, if I, can I see your last slide, Mr. Chow? Uh, yes, let me, oh, wait, no, one, Yeah, okay, no, so, uh, that this when, one? No, no, yeah, that when you have W equal to one, and that is reason not really of, uh, well, the reason primarily because you have a compression failure as you showed in the sketch. And that part is related to localization in compression. And I think one factor missing in your consideration is the distance between the two loading point in the compression zone. We and others have shown is larger that distance, the material becomes more brittle. So your W will very much depend on the distance between the loading point. This is because of localization in compression. Yes, that's a very good point that the uh, region may affect the localized compression behavior right. here. But for the experimental results here, we have like experiments from like literature where I have like loading points are very wide apart. And then, yeah, but for sure, I think further research needs to un more, yes. more understand the crashing behavior of UHPC beams with different like per loading points. And I think Currently, very few study has like reached the crushing failure in literature, and I think that's a very good suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you send me an email, I will send you a reference to our paper that was a while ago, where we showed the influence of the distance between the two loading points. Yeah. Thank you for reinforced contact. Yeah.